What's up, Buffalo Bills fans? It's been a long time since I've done a video, and before I do it, I just want to thank uh, a really cool guy, really good friend of mine, became really good friends with him over the years, um, started watching my videos back in 07, the, the first time I, I made the video, the Dallas Cowboy uh, Monday Night video, and um, really good guy. He actually got me, because I don't own any jerseys, and he was just horrified by that so he got me even though you know it's the older one he got it a few years back but he just never gave it to me because I hadn't had a chance to meet up he lives out in long island i live here in north new jersey commutes are crazy lives are crazy but i digress um you know he got me it's authentic marcel darius so you can see the numbers are you know like they're embroidered and really nice you know i could wear it you know a t-shirt underneath it if it get, you know gets too much and you know so it, it's it's a really cool thing that, that he got, you know, and I really, really appreciate it. He's a good dude. We BS about bills all the time, really. So, you know, thank you again for it. I really appreciate it. And he said, you've got to wear it in your next video. So here it is. Here's the video. Thanks again, Eric. I really, really appreciate it. So on to the bills. Back to the bills, I should say. Um, yeah, it's been a long time. A lot has transpired from going backwards, you know, we're in camp now, the Aaron Cromer incident, that's kind of dissipated a little now that the the Bills have, you know, suspended him for this. The, this is really the critical time that he needed to be with the football team anyway, particularly obviously the offensive line, and the games that he's going to miss are what they are. I, I mean, I personally thought the organization was going to part ways with them just because of the way things were. Um, you know, the, the new NFL, you know, so to speak, with the, the zero tolerance policy with these off the field incidences. I'm just like, you know, his head's on the chopping block. They're just going to do away with him. But apparently, the coaching staff and the organization felt that he was too big, um, too important of a component of the new staff. You know, it's, it is a new staff with a transition period, obviously, with a, a learning curve and all that kind of stuff. And this is a, a critical time that. A coach like him needs to be with his, his group because the offensive line and defensive they, they don't hit anymore they don't have any contact so this is the only time they really can so it's really really vital and even though i think kurt anderson was the um is the assistant offensive line coach who's working with the group cromer has you know, pretty good credentials pretty good background in that area so yeah six game suspension uh a dumb and it's you know, it was settled mutually with him and the parents of this kid, and it's unfortunate. You just move on from it. A little bit of a, you know, black eye in the organization, a little bit of a, you know, poop on you, but um, always could have been worse, right? And you know, Darius, one game suspension, you have that. Um, Nickel Roby just signed a couple year contract extension, which is good. He's highly um, seen, you know, highly regarded by the organization, the, the coaching staff. Back to a, you know, we've heard that, you know, being back in a, you know, well, wish I should call it Rex instead of Petten because since Petten cut his teeth under Rex, you know, a, a Rex style defense that where it suits his, it caters to his strengths as a, as a football player much better, and you know, going back to the draft, obviously with Darby and. All those guys, so the free agency, you know, Bills not signing Brandon Spikes and then Brandon Spikes going to New England and getting in some hot water, getting released, and it's been it's been a really crazy off season for players that were on the Bills, you know, no longer on the Bills and you know current Bills. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so much have happened. I just pretty much want to stick to what's going on right now in training camp and obviously the ten thousand pound elephant in the room, you know, I should say 25,000 pound elephant in the room, you know, is the quarterback position. And me, you know, this is my own personal view on it, my own opinion, my own take. I have officially sailed the EJ Manuel boat upstream. I'm, I'm just not going to sit and wait around for him to all of a sudden have the green light turn on or this the light bulb turn on above his head I'm like oh I got it now I just I, I I I see you know and I was as big an EJ supporter as there was 
you know, you guys remember my videos, gave him time, he needs time. Um, I, I was once, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was once to sort of use the Marone excuse for him as, as to, so as to give him a pass and, and, and new staff, new system, you know, this, this off season he spent with Steve DeBerg and I don't know, for me, I find it almost missing receivers that are not covered in, in, in practice. I mean, routes against air, that's, and with the regularity of which he does it, or it's reported that he does it, it it's, it's, you know, they, they, they vine videos. You can see it. It's not like they're hiding it. And there's a lot of fans on Twitter, you know, that attack the, the, the media that's covering the bill, covering the bills and saying they're just being negative. They're, but so what happened in that Pittsburgh practice last year where they just where they said EJ just lit it up like he had the most amazing practice ever. They decided to be nice to him that day or the scrimmage where he was decent. And then this practice, the consistency with him, which has always been and even throw to throw like you'll see two good throws and then you'll see him miss a receiver by seven, eight yards. Nowhere close. And or he'll throw it at his feet. And then it, you can't hold everybody back. Whether it's the other quarterbacks, the offensive unit, the entire football team, the coaches. If I had my druthers, I would, you know, bring them upstairs and say, look, you know, it didn't work out, but we feel like it's best you move on for yourself. You find another situation. That's fresh environment, fresh set of eyes, better for you, better for us, but we're going to move on. And the way I see it playing out is the way I think it'll play out. I think Castle, it's going to be that similar 49er formula that they first had with you know Harbaugh and Roman. You know, they came in, Alex Smith was the guy, they stood behind him, play good defense, run the ball, manage the football game. You know, and they had these packages for for um, Colin Kaepernick. He was a rookie. Even though I think Tyrod at this point in his career is a better thrower, passer than, than Kaepernick was at that time. And, you know, pretty dynamic runner himself. You know, Kaepernick obviously has proven himself time and time again as a dynamic running quarterback. Very, you know, crazy. You know, that 180 yard game against Green Bay was nuts. Um, you know, he's, and he's going to have those kind of packages in the offense. That's the way I see. It. That's the way I see it, and that's the way the depth chart is. When they released it today, EJ was the third quarterback on the depth chart. I that's I I, I you don't need to read the tea leaves. It's Castle's gotten all the reps with the ones. They, he and and this is what I say. You know the practices are cool and all, but I'll, I'll it's it's kind of I'll, I'll liken it to the draft. We're gonna go back to the tape. And Castle has much, much more game tape, obviously, than EJ. And a lot more good on time. He's got his bad, of course. I mean, come on, of course he has his bad. I'm not saying he's, you know, they just got, you know, Fran Tarkington 2.0, but he's got tons more better tape. And EJ's got, you know, the EJ defenders like me, you know, it harken back, well, you know, that Carolina comeback and the that Jets game, and then, you know, people that were his detractors, well, we got Houston last year, we got San Diego, they had a lot more to detract than good, and the injuries in his rookie year, and, you know, if he can't supplant these two guys as being a, a first-round pick, a guy with his size, his combination of mobility, and his arm talent, in terms of him being able to throw the ball, not so much be accurate with the ball, which has been his Achilles heel, is it's just not worth the it's not fair to the like I said it's not fair to the football team on any level and it's it's not fair to him just let him move on with himself and try to pick up somewhere else and the Bills move on as an organization get these quarterbacks repped the correct way in the, in, in the right order and stop you know for lack of a better term pussyfooting around with EJ it's, it's time to just cut the cord and say a mistake was made, whether it was whoever it was, you know, I, Buddy, you know, will get blamed for the pick, you know, Whaley will always step up and fall on the sword, it was a Bills pick, um, guys in the Bills media hint that it was Whaley, no, I'm sorry, Nick's forcing it, you know, 
Piscaglia in particular. I don't. We don't know, but you know, it, it it is what it is, and you just gotta face facts and just move on. Um, and and I think the football team will be better for it because then you're faced with an epic embarrassment like in thirteen where you're bringing in. You know, Matt Leiner making trades for Thad Lewis the last week of preseason. You know, you might start Jeff Tool. You know, Cobb's hurt. EJ is hurt. Um, last year, they're starting a quarterback week four that they signed the last, not even last game of preseason, like the last week, week before the first game. That, that can't be, that can't happen. It, it it's, it's embarrassing. It's the same as 2009. I'm sorry. They had that fake quarterback competition where it was pretty much known by everybody that followed the Bills around the Bills that Trent was going to get another chance. He was going to get another chance to start, regardless of how they played in practice or preseason. They had this. They came out and said that there was a quarterback competition, but there wasn't. Fitz ended up starting by what? Game three? Game, like. Three or five, I think three, after the, you know, that horrible, you know, the Trent's last plays of Bill where he ran out of bounds against Green Bay, like in the fourth quarter, they're losing by a lot rather than throw an interception or take a chance. And that was it. He was released. You don't want to do that. You don't want to put a player in that position. And, and I just think that that's where he is. That's where he is as a Bill. He's not. He's not going to be the guy, and we just all have to accept that, face facts, and then move on with it. You know, it's it's kind of funny. Like, there's just there's two sets of Bills fans. There's the ones that are just we, you know, we support EJ, and I, and I do too. I did, but I just this off season, just hearing, the, you know, as the practices were going, you hearing the same things, and just you can't keep going around the merry-go-round. It needs to be Castle Taylor doing their thing and their rotation. You know Taylor will be two, and he'll but he'll get his set plays. He'll get his burn. He'll get his play time, and Cass will be you know the starter. So you know we, the things we and we know a lot about this football team. We know we know they're going to run. We know they're going to be very creative formationally. We know they're going to use a lot of motion, tight end heavy, run heavy. Um, I feel like they're you know they are going to take shots. There's going to be a lot of you know those hard play action, max protect shots that they're going to take. And then they're going to play good defense. They're going to play good defense. Rex is going to, he rests his guys. He doesn't beat up his guys. He, he wants them fresh for game day. You know, and we've seen it. Guys getting rest days. Guys getting sent home on off days to go chill out at home. He's a little, you know, he doesn't grind on his guys. But he expects when it's time to strap it up and pad up and, and go out there and perform, he wants you to do it. In, in, in a lot of areas. He wants them to be physical on both sides of the ball. That O-line that seems so in flux, it, it's pretty much we know who it's going to be across the line. It's going to be Glenn. It's going to, you know, even though Quan Joe had his little day in the sun there, and I, I think he's getting better, you know, Henderson's talent can't be denied. His ability can't be denied. You know, he's going to be the right tackle again. You're going to have two new guards and John Miller incognito alongside Eric Wood. So that's pretty much set. You know, there's going to be those little fringe battles. I, I personally think they're only going to carry five wide receivers, given they might carry five running backs because, you know, you got to include a fullback. They're going to run the football a lot. I think Carlos Williams is a lock just because of his special teams ability, and they're intrigued by him as a runner. I think Fred is a lock. I think they like him in the room. I think they like his you know, rapport with the Bills fans and just who he is as a player, what he can still give in a limited role. You know, McCoy, obviously, and then Felton. So I think there's a spot there maybe for a Booby Dixon to be, you know, a guy who can get some, some time on special teams, obviously, and then, you know, maybe get some, some you know, garbage carries if they're blowing somebody out. They're going to keep four, four tight ends, eight, nine offensive linemen. And then, then you go to defense, you're going to see 10, 11 DBs kept. Also, now with this little nugget of Dan Carpenter's hamstring, they're trying to play him safe because they know they're going to use him 
they're not going to want to leave points on the field. And I think Gay is going get, to get, get on the team as a kickoff specialist again. And what I'm all tying this into is I only think they're keeping two quarterbacks. I only think they're keeping two quarterbacks on the roster. I think Sims is probably uh, headed for the practice squad as the scout team quarterback. Um, I, so I think they really need to have Manuel, you know, go on his way and start, you know, you're a month out from the season and start giving the quarterbacks that you're going to have, you know, guide this football team doing their thing in the correct order. So that's that's my take on it, Bills fans. Um, there was some nicks and bruises so far during camp. Nothing crazy, crazy. You know, obviously the McKelvin thing, but I I like McKelvin. I know he's been there. He's been there for a long time. But I know McKelvin. I think us as Bills fans know McKelvin more for his mistakes, his bonehead plays, like the fumble last year against you know Casey on a punt return, or the fumble against you know. New England, you know, opening night in 09 where he took the ball out and fumbled and New England goes ahead or they start their comeback and, you know, it just, I mean, he makes some talented plays, but I, I just, I think it's time for him, his role, especially with his injury history, to be reduced and for there to, there to be a young guy like a Darby getting the majority of the burn. And you're going to see a lot of, you know, Three safety, obviously, with Corey Graham, his ability to cover, you know, Lawson back at the, um, the linebacker position, Roby back in a defense that he's. So there's going to be a lot of guys just kind of getting retro, not even retrofitted, they're just kind of moving back to where they were the year prior. So that's it, Bills fans. Um, sorry for the length of the video, 17 minutes, not too bad, uh, especially given all the, the time I've missed doing these videos. And I miss doing them. Eh, you know, just life, not getting in the way, just living life and then, you know, you know, summer, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, just the football season is pretty much here. We're a little old, a couple of days and a month away. That's about it. Can't wait. But, yeah, when you have this time, I, I, I believe the coaches really know in their hearts what's what they envision and kind of want happening. I, you know, with the quarterbacks, and they need to do the right thing. Instead of, look, you have Orton last week before the, the, the season starts, you know, coming in, you need to do the right thing. You need to give Castle the best chance to be successful, the offense the best chance, the coaches, the coordinator, the football team as a whole, you know, Taylor, and just stop this this thing because I think it's just it's not fun it's not it's not even pretty we just need to excise it and I feel bad for EJ I really do he's a good guy he's a, he has the look he has the you know everything except he just can't you know make it all fit it happens but what are you gonna do all right those fans have a good one good rest of the week it's Monday so we got you know Friday Carolina, anything crazy happens, I'll probably jump on here and do a video. But if not, I'll wait till after Carolina to do my next video. So, all right, Bills fans, good to see you all again. I appreciate the comments, the questions, everybody who still follows. Uh, if you unfollowed, I, I can understand um, because I wasn't doing anything for so long. So, didn't want to clog up your feed with like old videos and stuff like that. All right, have a good one. Take care.